Good morning. Thank you for stepping into the file playland on this drab and rainy morning. As always, I'm your file player, and thank you for stepping into the file playland. I wanted to make this video regarding the not the projected lineup, but the lineup that I would run out with for the New York Mets going into the 2020 season. Um, I'm doing uh, two versions of the lineup, and uh, one version would be without our left fielder extraordinaire, a la DL, in uh, Johannes Cespedes, and with Johannes Cespedes. So I want to get this started. Um, uh, I was not trying to be conscious of doing lefty righty, lefty righty, lefty righty in the lineup. Um, even though it may seem that way by my configuration, but it wasn't intentional. But let's get this started. Uh, leading off in my lineup, a lot of people had slated uh, Brandon Nimmo because of his ability to get on base and draw long um, at bats. I didn't go with Brandon Nimmo in my lineup, though. I went with Jeff McNeil, our starting third baseman, projected. Uh, Nimmo, uh, McNeil, at one point in the year, had a 351 batting average, and this was going pretty deep into the year. Um, it wasn't like a fluky. He teetered off at the end and still ended up with a high three uh, batting average. He uh, has the ability to get doubles, a little bit of pop, not too much. Um, but just that high batting average and his ability to get on base is favored in my lineup. When he did teeter off at the end of the year, I think he, uh, was going through some injuries. Uh, nevertheless, though, I have, uh, Je um, McNeil starting as my top of the lineup in this, uh, batting order. The second in this uh, order is also another um, sort of surprise in that I would have Ahmed Rosario at in the uh, number two hole. Ahmed Rosario started the year pretty terribly at the uh, glove and at bat, but he ended up carrying the team for two small spurts throughout the year, and he and he was one of the one of our best players um, at the second half of the year. I think he ended up with a 280 batting average, or just about. Um, and he's still a young player, developing. Uh, what he has shown was improvement from year to year, even though it's in a short span or a short sample size. But um, you can't dismiss that. I think um, I could expect a lot uh, more of that from Ahmed Rosario. Say he gives us a 300 batting average next year and it makes an improvement you know um he also has uh speed which is very um limited with uh with throughout the lineup with the Mets so I put Ahmed Rosario in that two hole and hope that he could drive in runs uh throughout the year um hitting in behind uh McNeil so Ahmed Rosario would be in my two hole I wish I had graphics for this but I don't know how to do anything um with uh, technology. In my number three hole, I would have Peter Alonso, our first baseman extraordinaire. Peter Alonso has massive pop, and uh, he's just a threatening uh, presence in that lineup. Alonso also showed a little bit of a clutch factor uh, last year, and uh, when Alonso was going, a lot of other people had the ability to be clutch in different times towards the end of the year. With those two guys up front, I mean, uh, McNeil could get on base. And before Alonzo even gets on base, if uh, Rosario gets the right hit, that could be uh, two runs. I also forgot to mention McNeil's ability on base. Uh, Mc McNeil uh, stretches out a lot of um, doubles. And um, when somebody gets a single, he goes first to third. But uh, with Pete Alonso there, like, I mean, like, you know, a pitcher would, um, could get to the Pete Alonso already with us having scored a run and with the runner on base, you know, no outs. So uh, Pete Alonso gets the number three spot 
very tempted to put Pete Alonso in the number uh, four hole, but um, I want uh, Pete Alonso getting good pitches, so Pete Alonso gets my number three spot on this lineup. In uh, the next spot, I would put Michael Conforto in number four hole. Uh, Conforto had that uh, another a little bit of a, of a shaky start, ended off the season strong, but he has that 30 home run capability, which is uh, not present throughout the lineup. And uh, he did a lot of that stuff in City Field, one of the hardest ballparks to hit out of, especially uh, in the dog days of August. Um, you know, uh, and he performed well at the uh, tail end of last year. He has a good pop for um, a guy his size, but he's shown that ability to hit home runs regardless um, it, uh, throughout his uh, whole career. So I put Michael Conforto number five, four, sorry. In the number four hole, I would put Robinson Cano. The Cano, um, I mean, um, doesn't get much fanfare uh, from me. Um, and it could be interchangeable with uh, Ramos or Cano, like in this spot. That was a, one, um, the one tough time I had going. There's no, in my eyes, there's in, with the configuration that I'm going with, there's no wrong answer if you put uh, Ramos in the number five hole or Cano in the number uh, five hole and the other person in the number six hole. But uh, in for the sake of um, this uh, exercise, I put number uh, I put Cano in the uh, number five hole. Cano has uh, that pop as well, a little bit of pop to him. He gets on base at a good percentage, and he's a high average guy. So I wanted him there. Um, I think he offers that protection to. Um, Conforto if he's on. So I left him in the number five hole and put Wilson Ramos in the number six hole. Uh, Wilson Ramos, his bat fell off in many points last year, but he had a major hitting streak last year. And he has that uh, ability to uh, have pop. In the beginning of that streak last year that we had in the tail end of the year, um, he was carrying the team with his bat for a lot of that. He did taper off at the end, but no matter what, Wilson Ramos is an underrated bat. I mean, a lot of Mets fans are hard on him, but because um, he, he can't catch. I mean, like that's no secret. But he does have that ability to put up 280 and throw up 20-plus uh, home runs. So I put Wilson Ramos in the number six hole. Number seven hole, I put J.D. Davis. I know this is a little far back, and it sucks, but um, I didn't want to put him in the number eight hole, like because all the other people that we have in the lineup. A lot of people would want to put Rosario in this number eight hole, but I, I don't think that I think that would be a mistake. I want Rosario to develop uh, more than anything, and that's why I put him so high in the lineup at number two. But I put JD Davis at number seven in this configuration. I mean, and that's more of a uh, abundance of wealth with this lineup. We got a pretty good lineup, no, and no matter what configuration you go to, if you got a player like J.D. Davis, who had a uh, above 300 batting average last year, showed a little bit of a pop ability, and he's clutch. Um, but yeah, in this configuration, I got to put him number seven um, because I like Amir Rosario up top. Um, and last but not least... I put Brandon Nimmo in the number eight hole. I know a lot of people uh, love Brandon Nimmo, as do I. I didn't want Marte like um, because I wanted Nimmo to get a chance at center field in this uh, configuration, and um, he would be my number eight hitter. And um, the reason I say that is because Brandon Nimmo, um, unbeknownst to a lot of people, was still having good at bats when he was uh, going through a big time slump at the beginning of the year. He was injured throughout the beginning of the year as well, but he was still getting at bats um, 
that were drawing five pitches, seven pitches, um, and he wasn't getting on base a lot of times in those at-bats. Um, something he's shown in, uh, in, uh, in other years, that ability to get on base. He wasn't doing it as much last year, but he was still drawing good at-bats. So in this configuration, I leave him in the number eight hole. Now, I'll run through my uh, with Cespedes as fast as I can. Everything's pretty much the same, except that I do uh, McNeil, number one, Rosario, number two, Alonzo, number three, uh, Cespedes, number four, Conforto, number five, or uh, actually, I'm sorry, Conforto, number four, Cespedes, number five, Wilson Rombos, number six, uh, Robinson Cano, number seven, and Brandon Nimmo, number eight. Um, I like uh, Cespedes. Uh, he has an all or nothing uh, approach at the plate. And I would put, uh, I, you could also play around with putting Cespedes in the number uh, four hole with this uh, lineup and then putting Conforto number five. No wrong answer either. But uh, Cespedes has that all or nothing approach in the. Uh, in the lineup and he's a scary presence bro like you know um Can Can uh Cespedes is a underrated at that um you know you gotta factor that Cespedes has played in all bad ballparks throughout his career whether you go to Oakland um Boston don't count but um then he uh Damn, I can't, I can't remember where Cespedes played on the top of my head right now. Oh, oh Detroit. Um, and he uh, performed in both those places. And uh, as you all know, he also performed very well in uh, City Field. So having him in the number uh, four hole or the number five hole in that lineup, I mean, that's pretty beast, man. You know, so you got Cespedes. Uh, I mean, um, real quick, McNeil. Uh, Rosario, number two. Alonzo, number three. Cespedes, number four. Or number five. Um, Ramos, number six in this lineup because um, I wanted that lefty-righty um, approach. I mean, uh, Conforto, number five. Ramos, number six. And uh, Cano, number seven. Followed by um, Nimmo number eight. I hope I'm getting that right, and I'm driving as you can see. Yeah, so McNeil, Rosario, Alonzo. For the sake of this uh, exercise, uh, Cespedes, Conforto number five, um, Ramos number six, Cano number seven. And uh, Nimbo, number eight. And I know I mixed them up in that last sequence, but it's still a beast mode lineup. I did that intentionally. But, uh, yeah, that's a pretty good lineup, man. It's pretty menacing. So uh, I can't wait for the beginning of the year, man. I, I hope we get off to a fast start. Um, that way um, we already accl we're already acclimated to um, having a strong end of the season as, as it... Um, it relates to uh, last year, and I just can't wait, man. I'm going to spring training this year. I have my house in St. Lucie, which I'm going to make sure to visit. Um, and finally catch the Mets. I've had this house for a little while, and I haven't caught spring training of yet. But um, this year is going to be different. And I hope this year is going to be different for the Mets, man. I hope we go into the playoffs and dominate. Maybe uh, squeeze out a little World Series. Maybe... Uh, the ground gets another Cy Young or another one of our pitchers gets a Cy Young. The rotation stays strong. Who knows? I'll get to that in another video, though. I want to do more Mets stuff, though. The Mets are my number one team in the whole world of any team. Go Mets. Oh, right on cue, the Giant Stadium. I just passed it. Oh, let me see. Yeah, it's Quest Die is not... Uh, yeah, Giant Stadium right here. And uh, Quest Diagnostic uh, Field where the Giants do um, their... Uh, training. I actually saw an eagle on this tree right here. Yeah, on top of that tree. Yeah, that's my time, guys. I hope you uh, guys enjoyed the Super Bowl. Uh, my prediction, uh, let me flip my camera around. Can I? No, I can't do it at this point. 
My prediction, uh, Chiefs win by 10. I don't want to put a score on it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a good Super Bowl. Um, Halftime performance sucks. Don't care for J-Lo, um, even though she's a fox. Shakira, uh, don't care for music in English uh, much. I like her as a Spanish uh, musician, but uh, she, too, is a fox. She may be foxier than uh, J-Lo. Maybe I should make a video about that. Nah. But, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, them, uh, though I'm not looking forward to hearing their uh, screeching as far as their musical talents go. But yeah, go Mets. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the Super Bowl with that. As always, I'm your five player. Peace.